Ah, hello. Um, okay, welcome to the most anticipated talk of the time slot. Um, this is a, a short, non-technical talk about web accessibility. Um, it's, uh, it's actually not so much of a talk as me ranting and preaching for a few minutes about uh, a few concepts, so bear with me. Uh, hello, I'm Pavel. I'm a back-end developer that doesn't really know browsers too much. Uh, I work at a company called Unboxed Consulting. This is one of my three cell phones, um, and I bought it for 200 Rand at PEP Mobile um, so that I can test all the web apps and the websites that I build. And I know that if they work on this piece of crap, then almost anybody in the country or world can access my sites. So this keeps me uh, along, I don't know, keeps me making good websites, I suppose. This is a parasite. Um, it is the parasite that causes a, a parasitic disease called toxoplasmosis, um, and it affects all warm-blooded animals. Um, it affects their behavior, so it's, uh, it's been known to make rats a little bit crazy, but it also affects human behavior in a negative way. And these little bastards are the carriers. Um, a third of the population is susceptible to toxoplasmosis, and crazy cat lady syndrome is a real thing, and it's caused by the parasites that these guys carry. Uh, so my theory is that no one actually really likes cats. Uh, anyone that thinks they like cats just have toxoplasmosis and their minds are just <laughs> screwed up. So, <laughs> so you guys should get yourself checked. Um, maybe Simon can help, I don't know, diagnose you guys. Um, <clears throat> I don't like cats, so I'm part of the two-thirds that are safe. Um, so I, I propose that instead of angry cat or grumpy cat, we start using this guy because he is cuter and also <laughs> he won't make you sick. So, but anyway, um, what is accessibility? That quote I stole, I think, of Wikipedia or something is the standard definition that everyone uses for uh, uh, accessibility. But I don't want to strictly talk about that definition uh, just by itself. I also want to touch upon a little bit about progressive enhancement, um, doing things when we build websites, not doing certain things, um, and also just uh, remind ourselves that people are going to access our devices, oh, our websites, on a whole range of devices. So just bear that in mind. This isn't a, strict, a talk strictly about the World Wide Web Consortium and, and their guidelines, that sort of thing. So, I want to start by dispelling a few myths and urban legends. Um, there's a guy called Derek Miller. He's got a YouTube channel called Veritasium. It's a science channel. And he did a study at the University of Adelaide saying that uh, people learn better when they are first shown the misconceptions about a subject that they're learning. So I just want to dispel those myths quickly, and then hopefully we can retain the good information better. So the, the first myth is that accessible websites are ugly. And this myth is sort of perpetuated by the fact that all the websites that teach you about accessibility do look like dog shit. So that doesn't help. Um, and uh, Chris and Mark, I apologize for the next slide, but uh, so Campaign Monitor, this email service, um, this website is...
overpriced device which makes the world look beautiful and you know not everyone has a retina macbook pro so if you're designing on this and you only test on this you know you might have a bit of a problem some people or in fact more than half of web sessions are instigated via mobile devices and on mo mobile devices you don't have things like click events and those fancy javascript events you know some people have older phones, and we all know that if it's not an iPhone or a Samsung, it's an older phone, right? And some people have got slightly older desktop computers. So, you know, it's good to think about these sort of devices when we're making our you know, startups and our, and our websites for our clients and that kind of thing. But you're looking at me uh, and thinking like, what? I don't give a shit about people with older computers. We all design for modern web browsers. Right? Why should we care? And uh, we should care because of uh, this little word called standards. Um, standards sort of make things predictable and they keep chaos away. Uh, this picture is actually misleading because this is when Sweden changed from driving on the left-hand side to the right-hand side. And on that day, there were less, less accidents than on any other day. So I don't know, but the picture looks good. So on the web, predictability is underpinned by the World Wide Web Consortium, the W3C, and they lay out uh, guidelines and principles that web developers follow and browsers follow, Firefox, Opera, not IE, um, and you know, it makes our lives as developers happier because we know if we program one thing, it'll, it'll work on every other browser. So it was founded by this guy, um, Tim Berners-Lee, who's uh, the founder of the World Wide Web. And the guidelines that they set out are called the World no, Web Content Accessibility The World Content Accessibility Guidelines. So it's four principles underlined by a few guidelines, and they're what the, that your website has to be perceivable, operable, understandable, and the last one in the bullet list. So what does it mean for a website to be perceivable? Simply that um, for every bit of non-text content. Um, it has to be a viewable or consumable by someone that has a device that might not be able to load it. So images should have alt text because screen readers might not be able to load images. Your videos should have closed captions because if you're watching a French video, you might want to know what the subs are in English. So some quick tips for alt text. Um, it's always good to be concise. Um, the alt text should tell you what the function and the content of an image is. Um, if you have a picture of, say, Albert Einstein sitting on a chair, your alt text would be Einstein on a chair and not image of Einstein on a chair because that's a little bit redundant in case you didn't know. Your site has to be operable, so that means it should be navigable via peripheral input devices like mice and keyboard. Uh, you should try and stay away from on-click events because, for instance, on a phone you can't click. So you might want to have you know, an on-submit event, so you have to think about things like that. 
Uh, you should not break navigation of the space bar. Some people use space to scroll down and shift space to scroll up, that kind of thing. Your website should be understandable. I was going to look for a, a, a code snippet of Perl, but this was easier to uh, Google, actually. Uh, so, yeah, a few things to make your website understandable. Add a language setting to your doc type declaration. Make your copy simple and you know, legible to the layman. Don't be technical unless you specifically have to. And things like uh, input validation. If you can, use HTML5 input forms so that if someone enters an email without an at, it'll tell them on the spot without them having to reload and you know, use extra bandwidth, that kind of thing. And the last one is that your site should be robust, and it should work regardless of environments. So that's mobile, tablets, IE, you know, that kind of thing. Um, devices that don't support high-quality images. Yeah, so for those of you who have a UX team, or at least do some kind of UX when you're in planning, you'll already know that if a website is accessible, it's uh, more likely that usability is going to increase, which means more people going down your conversion funnel, and everyone wins in the end because you get more money from your visitors. Um, so if you guys do use personas during your planning process, it wouldn't hurt to add a persona of, say, an older person on an old device on like a Celsi connection during load shedding. So it's <laughs> worth thinking about that. Another good reason to think about accessibility is that it's the law. So if, in fact, in some countries, and more so than others these days, um, you're actually obliged to you know, make your websites accessible to people with disabilities, um, and failure to do so results in hefty fines. So, for instance, in America, there's the Americans with Disabilities Act. UK has the Disability Discriminations Act. There's legislation in Uruguay, Canada, and Australia. I don't think South Africa cares too much. I'm not sure. Um, and basically, the legislations loosely say that if it's unreasonably hard for someone with a disability to use your service, you have to fix your ways. So in 2000, during the Sydney Olympics, there was a, a, a man called Bruce Maguire. He was blind from birth. He tried to access their website to see, I don't know, the scores of the Australian team or something. And he couldn't, so he took them to court, and he won. And he got 20, 000, a $20,000 settlement. In America, Disney got taken to court as well, but they settled out. I don't know the details. You'll have to Google. So a little bit about eyesight. There's, like I said, vision isn't just binary. You've got a whole range of eyesight problems. You've got blindness, low vision, you've got nearsightedness, farsightedness, and at least three color blindnesses. So you've got color blindness of red, green, and the other primary color, I can't remember. And so basically for a normal person, you see that, uh, you see the bars on the left, and if you've got some sort of color blindness, you'll see the two, or the middle one, and the one on the right. So if you're designing an admin system and you've got nice graphs, try not to only use red and green because anyone with color blindness will not be able to see what the hell your dashboard is about unless you've got labels and that sort of thing. Uh, I myself am short-sighted, so if I do this, I don't know who the hell is who, uh, but I'm lucky because I can see everything on the screen. Not everyone who is short-sighted uses glasses when they browse, so that means if you've got tiny little fonts, fonts then they won't see what the hell's going on in your screen. Also, during a major depression, people see a weaker contrast, and colors are, appear duller. So, um, you know, if someone is depressed, maybe, uh, or going through a major depression, it'll be kind of hard for them to see your light gray text on white background writing. You know, it's going to be invisible to them. Uh, and depression and mental illnesses are difficult to pinpoint as they are, so we can't really you know, tell how many people are affected. Just because you can read it, you shouldn't assume that you know, anyone else will be able to read writing on your website. So two small mistakes slash best practices I want to go through. Uh, first one is this abomination called scroll jacking. So for those of you who don't know, it's when a website thinks it's smarter than you and will tell you how fast you're allowed to scroll by intercepting your scroll speed. Um, and there's three basic rules of web design. Number one, don't use Comic Sans. 
Number two, hate on IE when you're developing. And number three, don't intercept the space bar or scroll jacking. Just, just don't do it. So here's some examples of you know, websites. And why shouldn't you do it? Well, on older machines, it retards performance. It'll really make it sluggish. Um, a lot of people don't like it. Some people will go so far as to build Chrome extensions that will redirect them away from your website forever. You know? And uh, number three is that screen readers cannot actually break because those little three dots on the, on the right-hand side you see that supposedly are like, I don't know, a, a flipped slider, um, they don't have a title element, so screen readers are screwed. The other one is buttons and links that say click here. This is a very bad practice. One, because bad SEO. Two, screen readers will say link before, will read out link before hitting a link. So if you have a link click here, a blind person will hear link click here. I mean, what does that tell them? Uh, three, it increases cognitive overload for you. So if you're reading a long sentence and there's a call to action that says click here, you're like, I don't know, whatever. Um, and also, if you, so if you use descriptive text instead, it will be better for everyone, and you'll get SEO superpowers. You will rank higher. Cool. So there's studies have shown that uh, playing first-person shooter games will increase your hand-eye coordination and your reflex times. Unfortunately, not everyone plays games, and not everyone has you know, fast reflex times. In fact, some people have really slow motor abilities and really slow or really poor fine control. So someone might struggle to use a mouse, someone might type really slowly. So if you make really small input fields and really small buttons, someone will struggle to you know, use your site. They won't necessarily leave your site, but they won't love you for it. <laughs> so I want to take a, a quick detour. This is a basic formula for money, for profitability. Got your lifetime value minus your acquisition cost, right? And to increase profitability, you either increase LTV or you drop acquisition costs. Um, other studies have shown that loyal customers are way more profitable than once-off customers. And on the online, um, that's translated as you know repeat visitors. Um, so if you've got someone that might be a repeat visitor and you've got tiny little funds and they don't come back, you're doing the opposite of you know, increasing your value. So why risk throwing away money just because you don't want to increase you know, your font by like 20% or make it a little bit darker and more contrasty? So this is a thought to think about. So cool, but you know, we all have good eyes and we're all healthy and all that stuff, so we forget. It's off the top of, off, not on the top of our minds. So let this talk serve as a reminder that we aren't our target audience. In, well, we generally aren't our target audience. But you guys might be thinking, sure, but disabled people aren't really our target audience either. Um, well, the reality is, according to the UN, at least 10% of the world lives with some or other disability. And you know, that's, if you want to throw away 10% of your consumer base or customer base, then sure. But otherwise, disabled people really are your target market. So just a few more things about fonts. Uh, browsers render them differently, uh, as you can see there. So if you're using you know, a poor ch font choice like Cambria, for instance, you, I don't know if you guys can see from here, but as it gets smaller, it gets really illegible. So it's important to choose you know, good typography for your site, make it big enough that people can actually read, because if they can't, their visit is pointless. You know, maybe they'll come look at your pictures. And speaking of word, words and fonts, remember how not everyone plays games? Um, well, let's not make finding interactive content a game on your site. So here's a screenshot from Google, uh, not Google, that's YouTube, um, with two links in the About section there, but not that you can see because they don't underline it or make it any visually different from the rest of the text. Um, the WCAG guidelines that I mentioned earlier state that you, know, you should underline your links, don't underline anything that's not a link, but if you don't underline it, then at least give it a contrast ratio of three to one to make it appear different from the rest of the text. You don't want to read like a whole medium.com article and hover your mouse everywhere to see what's a link. It's, it's a bit silly. But you know, you guys don't experience accessibility issues, right? Uh, well, pick up your phone and go to a, any website that's not optimized for mobile, and all of a sudden you, you have an accessibility issue. So I found this on Twitter. This is some team 
They're moving to a, a new version of their site, which will be mobile friendly. And here's some motivation that they use to remind themselves how shit the experience is for people at the moment. So you guys have heard of this hip new language, JavaScript, which is new hotness, and it's all cool. And here's an award-winning website built predominantly you know, with JavaScript, does some mappy kind of things. And here's the same website with JavaScript turned off. Not really that functional. So it's important to separate your content from your presentation. A lot of you would have heard this uh, phrase before. And the reason for that is because if JavaScript fails, if something fails, your website is at least still usable to your visitors. But who cares? Who cares about, you know, if someone visits my site without JavaScript or something like that? Well, you should, unless you've got 100% coverage, your things never work. You should care if you use any third-party assets because they might time out, they might interfere with your site in a way that you don't know, they might break certain features, all of a sudden you can't convert them down your funnel. Also, there's this browser. So IE is the one we all love to hate, Opera Mobile is the one that we don't even think about. I've never seen a client brief that said Opera should be one of the supporter browsers, ever. Um, it's a turd. It doesn't support, like, it barely supports anything. It doesn't do SVG fonts, no Flexbox, no funny, like, it's, I mean, it really, it's a piece of shit. It supports 18% of modern browser features. It doesn't really support any JavaScript, just about. Um, but, 200 million people use it. Uh, it's, I think it's got just under 10% market share worldwide. And millions of South Africans use it because it, it's a proxy browser, so it saves bandwidth. It decreases image size and makes everything you know, small and tiny. So anyway, a lot of people use it. You should at least make sure that it kind of works on this browser. At least you, know, you can see content. So quick recap, it's not a lot of extra effort. I didn't really go into how you should start, because it, it really is that easy. If you, if you know CSS and HTML, you can make your websites accessible with like 1% extra time. Um, it's the law, you'll be a nicer person, and people will buy you flowers. So some tools of the trade. Um, I actually won't really go through them, because I'll put them up on, uh, I'll put the slides up on the internet, so you can see that. But I do want to go through two book recommendations. So, Again, no one's really going to go home or back to the office and be like super woo, passionate about accessibility, but it's worthwhile buying a book and you know, having, having it lay around with all your other UX books when you guys are planning. So it's a bit handy. So one of them is the O'Reilly Universal Design for Web Applications book. Um, and any O'Reilly book with an animal on the cover is automatically brilliant, so it's, it's, a, it's a good one. Uh, this is the other one from The Pragmatic Programmer, which is currently out of print but you can probably find it on Amazon for, for quite cheap. Um, and yeah, that's, that's me. <clears throat> Any questions I can give a probably wrong answer to? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So ARIA is another part um, of web accessibility. So ARIA helps um, screen readers for things like JavaScript functions. So um, a screen re reader will at least know that this JavaScript thing might not kick off, but it tells it what it would do. And I didn't really touch too much upon that, but um, yeah, web ARIA is just a, another subset of accessibility for. Yeah, you should, you should use ARIA, yeah. yeah. Cool, yes. Um, um, so there's a word called like progressive enhancement. If if text loads on there without CSS, cool. But if you know if you want to try and use your type ahead search on IE6, then you, know, you may as well inject yourself with rabies or something. You know. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, no. Well, to, Tool to design, I don't know, specifically. Uh, it's probably a good thing. Yeah. Or you can support hover, but just, yeah. I don't know, or hover is generally, you know, for, for styles and that sort of thing. So it's, if, if it's not a critical feature, 
then again, progressive enhancement means on a desktop browser, make it do some pretty thing. But as long as it doesn't break something for your, a mobile device or a lesser device, or IE6, then it's fine. Yeah, lots. Um, well, in the U.S., um, well, just like any other law, I suppose you, you have to and you don't know it until you, know, you breach that law and then you go to jail or something. So, <laughs> but any, any, I, I know that the, the White House website is you know, completely accessible and anyone that works on government projects or gets, uh, I don't know what your guys' version of a tender is, um, they have to meet those criteria, and one of those criteria is accessibility. But as for commercial, private websites, I think it's only when you get caught, really. Yeah. Yeah. That's not legal advice, obviously. <laughs> cool. All right. I think break time. Sweet. <laughs>